Hello, my name's Katie and I'm a mathematician and this is Paul who is also a mathematician and we're here because we have a video response solution to Matt's dice puzzle. Uh, so we watched Matt's dice puzzle video uh, and having seen that we decided we wanted to have a crack at coming up with our own solution. So in order to have a go at this puzzle we've made our own version of Matt's dice cube. Uh, this is a gigantic version of the thing that Matt's got. I don't know where Matt got his, but I made this myself with a laser cutter and it is not, it's not closer, even if it's further away, it's still much bigger than Matt's. So the puzzle is, you're going to play a game of Monopoly or whatever your favourite game that requires you to roll two dice is, but for some reason all you've got is Katie's ridiculous box with three dice in, and so you can roll this and roll three dice, but there's no way to tell them apart. They're all the same colour and they all look identical. So there's no way to pick two of them to use as your two dice. So you need some kind of alternative method to simulate rolling two dice using only the results of rolling three indistinguishable dice. It's a good maths puzzle. Uh, some people have tried to use the real world to solve this, like take the left hand two dice. Uh, we have done no such thing, we've done an actual math solution to this. Um, so obviously if you're trying to just simulate the roll of one dice, that's quite simple because all you do is take the three numbers on the dice, add them together and then take the remainder modulo 6. So you divide it by 6 and you look at the remainder and that will give you a number between 1 and 6. But crucially it will give you each of those numbers between 1 and 6 with an equal probability, which is what you would get if you just rolled one dice. So if you roll two dice, there are 36 different things that can happen because the first dice can be any of six different numbers and the second dice can be any of six different numbers. And those 36 different outcomes are what we have to simulate in the three dice puzzle. So if you have three different dice, there are 216 possible combinations, six times six times six. And of those 216 different combinations, they fall into different types. So first of all, you could have all three dice different and there are 20 different ways to do that using the numbers 1 to 6 and each of those will occur 6 times in the 6 different orders. There are 30 different sets that consist of 2 dice the same and 1 dice different and they can each occur in 3 different orders and you can also have all 3 dice the same, obviously there are only 6 of those because there are only 6 numbers on the dice and they only occur in 1 order because even if you rearrange them you get the same thing. So that means that there are 56 different sets of numbers that we need to use. So what we wanted to try and do is come up with an answer that um, uses the solution for one dice uh, where you add up the three numbers and take the remainder after you divide it by six and then come up with a second method that also generates a random number between one and six from the three dice but in such a way that the, the two random numbers are independent of each other so that if you just do them both with the same three dice roll then you get two different numbers between one and six and you use those numbers as the values of the two dice. The difficult thing here is making sure that the probabilities are right because you could assign them to the combinations in any number of different ways. It's a finite number. But you might find that things would be more likely to happen than others and you need to make sure that the probabilities balance out. So that means you need to look at how many different orders each thing can be put in and make sure you assign them properly. So if we split up those 56 different combinations into the six different groups. So these groups show the remainder on division by six. So in fact, each of these six columns will tell you what would happen if you added up the three digits and divided by six and took the remainder. And we're gonna use that to model our first dice. So we're saying that the first of our two imaginary dice is determined by which column you're in here, which is determined by the total modulo six. So because the groups of purple numbers, which are three different numbers, can occur in any one of six different orders, they're more likely to occur than the others. The blue numbers can occur in any one of three different orders, so they're less likely than the purple ones, and the green ones can only occur in that order, so they're even less likely. And we need to make sure that the probabilities match up. What we really need to do is divide each of these columns into six sets, each of which will occur six times. So for example, we could take the second column and we could put the three purple sets each into one and then the blue sets would have to pair up to make the other three sets of six. 
So it turns out that if you try to do this, it's pretty difficult. At least it was difficult for us. But luckily, we've come up with what I think it's safe to say is definitely the simplest and most elegant foolproof method that is possible. It can be summarised very simply using this flowchart. Dead simple, dead simple. <laughs> All right, so let's talk you through it using the gigantic dice. Okay, so we roll the dice. And what have we got? A two, a three, and a three. All right, so a two and three and three add up to eight, which is two, once you've divided by six and taken the remainder. So our first dice of the pair is a two. The next thing we need to do is look at whether the value on this dice is odd or even. If it's odd, we don't need to do anything, but if it's even, we need to do something to the values of these dice. And what we need to do is subtract them all from seven. We need to kind of flip them to their opposite. Luckily, uh, with dice, normally that's quite easy because it just means you turn them over and you look at what's on the back. Of course, we can't do that with these dice because they're inside a stupid box. So we just have to subtract them all from seven. So instead of two, three, and three, we've got five, four, and four. All right, so the next step is we see if there are two different even numbers on our dice or not. So we've got a five, which is odd, and two fours, which are two even numbers, but they're both the same, so it doesn't count. Okay, the next question says, is your first dice three or six? Turns out that's a bit of a special case. It's not, so we can ignore that step. So now our flowchart magically knows that two of the dice are the same and one is different, so we take the one that's different and add one to it. So we've got two fours that are underneath those threes and one five that's underneath the two. So we add one to the five and get six. And because we initially had an even value here and we had to flip everything, we now flip it back again. So the six becomes a one. So that means this dice roll would correspond to a two and a one. Dead easy. All right, should we do another? Yeah, let's do it again. Okay, so. Uh, so we've got a 1, a 2, and a 3. So they add up to 6, that's easy. Our first dice is 6. Okay, again that's an even number, so we have to flip all of those, so we end up with a 4, a 5, and a 6. Yeah, uh, and now the next question is, are there two different even numbers, which there are? Yes, there are, there's a 4 and a 6. So in that case we just use the uh, remaining number, which is a 5, but because we flipped it we have to flip the 5, so that becomes a two. We've got a six and a two. Okay, should we do one more? One more. Okay. Okay, so we've got a one, a five, and a five. So if we add those together, we get 11, which means our first dice is five. Yep. Yep. So five is odd, so we don't have to do anything. That's a relief. Yep. So are there two different even numbers? No, there's not. They're no. all odd. Okay, in that case, uh, is this dice a three or a six? It is not. It's not. So magically there are two the same and one different. We take the number that there is only one of, which in this case is one, and add one to it. So our second dice is a two. All right. Yeah. Well, this is, this is you know, it seems fairly straightforward. There are a couple of sort of strange things that happen because if this dice is three or six to start off with, there are some slightly funny cases and those correspond to, in our big sheet of dice numbers, they correspond to the green sets of three the same. They are very slightly confusing in this and they make things a bit complicated because each of those occur once. So instead of pairing up the um, blue ones in pairs and the purple ones each making a set of six on their own, we need to use the three green ones together with one of the blue ones. Uh, and what that means is that just occasionally uh, there is an entry on the flowchart which says are the dice two, two, and five, uh, which is what well, I think is what's generally referred to as an edge case. Uh, but it's it's quite nice that we've only got the one edge case. Uh, and if the dice are two, two, and five, then a very strange thing happens. Uh, and instead of taking the number that there's only one of, you take uh, two. Uh, and then if it's not two, two, and five, then uh, you can use the number of different values on the dice times two. And again, if your number was originally even, you have to flip that back again. 
Anyway, we will put a full schema for our solution somewhere, uh, a link to it somewhere in the description for the video so that you can check and you can absolutely satisfy yourselves that it definitely works. Uh, the thing that we wanted to do was to make sure that the probabilities all work out properly. So, um, I wrote a little computer program to simulate this and tried it on all 216 possible dice rolls and every possibility for the two dice came up six times, so that was nice. That's pretty good. Uh, the program was written in a ridiculous stats programming language called R, uh, and we will put a link to the code down here as well, uh, and we might even try and write a version of it in a normal person programming language too, so that you can see how it works, uh, but hopefully that will give you uh, a, a, a possible solution to this. I'm going to say, as much as we believe this is the most elegant and simple possible solution, it's kind of not. Uh, there is at least one edge case and it's a bit messy, but there is a solution. It is possible to do this and I very much hope that other people have come up with something uh, even more elegant and beautiful than what we have done. Uh, but we'll, we would also like to say thanks very much to Matt because it was quite a nice fun puzzle uh, and to Lucas who originally set the puzzle for him uh, and uh, if you want Matt I'll make you one of these. Shall we uh, try and do some quickly to prove that it is a practical method? Yeah for, it's, it's definitely a practical method. Let's, let's just do it. I'll roll it and then you can tell us what it is. Yeah? How have we got? Here we go. Alright so the first number is five and the second number um, is a Six. Good. Five and six. Okay. All right, so the first number must be a three, and the second number is a four. It's three and a five. It is. It's a two and a five. One and a six. Five and a five. See? Dead easy.